Hello guys and welcome back to this YouTube channel and in today's video I will be reviewing the Chinese Grand Prix and although it wasn't that great of a race there were still a few talking points for me to elaborate upon. Let's start off with our race winners Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. Both driver and team just waltzed towards victory. Lewis jumped Valtteri at the start and from there on in it was just a procession Hamilton controlled the race from start to finish. Bottas will be disappointed that he wasn't able to maintain his championship lead but with the how well the Mercedes car is working currently there is still a lot to play for. Ferrari need to write this weekend off, I mean, their pace was just absolutely nowhere. Vettel in the end didn't have that bad of a race, he was only 5 seconds behind Bottas, he amassed the best out of the car as he possibly could, and Leclerc very frustratingly came home in P5. But the strategy I feel had a lot to say, because Leclerc's strategy was just basically surrendering his P4. And of course you have the team orders. Vettel looked quicker behind Leclerc, but when he got out in front, when Leclerc let him through, Vettel was locking up left, right and centre. But going back to team orders, I get it why they're in Formula 1. They're a part of Formula 1. They allow teams to dictate their own way of racing. But this is the third race in a row where Ferrari have imposed team orders on Charles Leclerc. So what was the point in getting Leclerc if they're just going to be keeping him behind Vettel all this time they might as well have kept Raikkonen because I imagine he would be more happy to be in number two than the Monegasque driver. But what a scrap Max and Seb had for P3 after the first round of pit stops and that is as close as Red Bull really got to a podium finish. Max again just got the best out of that Red Bull chassis while Pierre Gasly was just way off the pace again but at least he got P6 and the fastest lap. So there are signs of improvement from Gasly but the Red Bull car just is not quick enough for podium contention let alone race wins. Daniel Ricciardo was best of the rest. I mean the Renault car worked so well around the Shanghai International Circuit that Nico Hulkberg had to retire after some kind of problem. I'm not sure what problem it was, but reliability is definitely the Achilles heel of Renault at the moment. But pace-wise, they are definitely getting there. I genuinely don't believe Haas had that bad of a race car. I just think the teams around them just had that little extra edge over them. I mean, Grosjean was only a couple of seconds away from one world championship point, but Magnussen really just had no pace throughout the entire Grand Prix. McLaren's race was basically wrecked after their collision with Daniil Kvyat. Thankfully, Lando Norris didn't flip over in this spectacular incident. He retired in the end. He was classified as a finisher, but he didn't finish the race. But science just couldn't get close enough to some points. As I said, the first lap incident basically wrecked their Grand Prix. What a drive from Alex Albon. The pit lane to 10th. What a drive using that one-stop strategy to perfection. I'll talk about him a little bit later, but Daniil Kvyat obviously got caught up in that first lap incident. I totally disagree with Kvyat's penalty, a drive-through penalty. I mean, at the very most, I feel it was a five-second time penalty. I mean, look at the Verstappen Science incident at Bahrain. That wasn't even a first lap clash, yet it was still rendered as a racing incident. I mean, I will acknowledge the fact that Kvyat did cause the accident. He got loads of oversteer coming out of turn six. He did cause the accident, but a drive-through penalty, really? Giovinazzi didn't actually have that bad of a race. Obviously, he started 19th and finished 15th. I mean, I don't think he was really that bad, but Raikkonen scored points again. The guy has been one of the best drivers this season. I know it's only the first three races, but Raikkonen's just delivered solid, solid form. And I think he's really justifying my thought of him being in the top 20 drivers ever to grace F1. Again, Sergio Perez delivering on race day. What a drive. The racing point was nowhere up until Sunday and he really did do well. So did Lance Stroll obviously getting up to 12th but his qualifying really did cost him. And now we have Williams. I mean to be fair Russell and Kubica had another little scrap near the end of the race. But my goodness, the car is so... So it's absolutely untrue. The official driver of the day went to Alex Albon and I cannot disagree. I believe Perez and Raikkonen deserve to be 
in the same bracket as Albon's performance, but my word, Albon, as a rookie, excelled and he was clinical. Lewis Hamilton has taken the lead in the championship. He leads by six points to his teammate Valtteri Bottas, who's in second. Verstappen nestles himself in third, with the two Ferraris rounding out the top five. The gap is so big at the top that a Mercedes driver will be leading the championship after Azerbaijan. I mean, what a start to the season for the Silver Arrows. Simply put it, the gap between Merck and Ferrari is extortionate. But the midfield battle is anything but extortionate in terms of points gap. Eight points separating fourth to ninth. But guys, that is it. Please like and comment on this video. Tell me your thoughts of the Chinese Grand Prix and please subscribe to the F1Tube YouTube channel. And until next time guys, see you later.